All right. We are recording this presentation as well. So if you miss anything or you'd like to see something again, um, make sure that you visit our archives page on the Practice Partner Academy webpage at podiatrymeetings.com. Uh, or if you simply can't find it, just reach out to us at, <coughs> at podiatrymeetings.com and we can send you a link to this recording. Yep. All right. All right. And with that, Sarah and I are going to mute ourselves and turn off our camera, but we are still sitting here. We're monitoring the chat. We're monitoring the Q&A. So if you have any questions, go ahead and type it in and we'll get to all those questions in just a bit. Um, and Randy, go ahead and take it away. All right. Thanks, Ann and Sarah. You guys can see my full screen, I assume. <clears throat> yes, you okay. are good. All right. So it's eight o'clock. I assume most of you on the East Coast have finished dinner now. I will, although, you know, Sarah's about to have her mac and cheese. So, but um, others, you know, so we're tying it into a little bit of food. Are other podiatrists eating your lunch? Or maybe not your dinner, but maybe your lunch. So that's, I, I love this picture. Um, for those of you that know, know me, my name is Randy. I'm with the Podiatry Content Connection. I'm the National Director. And uh, most people know about us, but we're, you know, the, we're the number one comprehensive digital agency for podiatrists only. And we've been helping private practices attract more new patients from the web for 10 years now. And we're proud that we, um, we give back <clears throat> to the colleges every month for about nine years now um, to Kent State, uh, Barry, Temple, and others. And we actually handle the marketing for Barry University and Kent State. And um, so now, you know, you hear on the news <clears throat> that the uh, price of basically everything is going up. Um, I'm sure you see when you go to the diner or you go to a restaurant, but the average cost of a lunch is like 15 bucks. So if you only eat it out on weekdays, let's say $15 times five, <clears throat> $75 a week. It's fair. It's a number. You know, 75 times 52 weeks is $3,900 a year. Um, so I guess if you're talking about lunch, well, you could have the kind of the TV dinner or you could have the full buffet, you know, in the podiatry world, some might call it a, you know, a, an ideal patient versus maybe not, you know, you'd like to have more ideal patients. <clears throat> so where are we going with this? Um, you know, many podiatrists that we speak with have a, 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 a word in their mind, the E word expense, you know or versus an investment. So what is an investment? An investment is defined by Google as like the action of or process of investing money for profit or material result. So when it comes to online marketing, uh, it's an investment really in your practice. Um, and I'm not referring to just a, a website. <clears throat> it's really about a comprehensive web presence uh, that includes like a website at the kind of like the, the hub with uh, you know websites and blogs and social media and ads and repetition management, et cetera, all designed to basically make you visible, help you attract more new patients from the web, uh, help you get more good reviews, all that good stuff. Um, and then, you know, we've been doing this 10 years since, since the very beginning when we started exhibiting at podiatry conferences. I've been asking the same exact question to podiatrists about uh, to make them think I call it practice math but what is the value of one new patient to your practice so if you get a new patient and what we've been hearing it's amazing consistently for 10 years is like one new patient is worth about a thousand dollars over the first 12 months and <clears throat> this is um what I call practice math where you, how do you uh, you know attract or bring in an additional million dollars in revenue to your practice in 12 months. <clears throat> so I'm going to walk you through this. So basically, if one new patient, meaning, you know, over the first year between initial visit and follow-ups and products and repeat visits, et cetera, um, is worth about $1,000, well, the, the simple math is 1 million divided by 1,000 is, you know, 1,000. So if you need 1,000 new patients over 12 months, that equates to about 83 patients a month. And 80, 83 patients a month is about four, you know, with four weeks in a month, is about 20 patients a week, approximately. And then 20 patients per week, assuming it's a five-day working week, is only four new patients a day. So when you hear it that way, it's like, you know, if, you can, if somehow, some way, you have a system that consistently attracts four new patients per day, 
may equal an additional million dollars in annual revenue to your practice. And again, if that's a initial, you know, the first 12 months, of course, the lifetime value of any patient is much greater than $1,000. But if you could do that, there's a formula for, you know, doing it. The question becomes, how do you get four new patients a day? Um, and that, of course, again, this is talking about, you know, initial visit, follow-ups, et cetera, and repeat visits to your office and future potentials, which could turn to more customers. So, you know, think about this. Do you know, you know, well, do you know to or who or why you're losing patients online? So, you know, a lot, what we find is that a lot of podiatrists are so busy doing what they're doing, they don't even know what's going on around them. They're so close to it that they can't see. And they're wondering why maybe their patient flow is actually down, or maybe they're not getting the types of patients that they'd really like to treat. We call them ideal patients. So, you know, we cover some great ground uh, when we do these. We actually offer a, a complimentary web strategy session to help you identify in your area if there's a podiatrist or competitor of yours that is dominating. We want to take a look at them, uh, compare to you, and show you why they're dominating um, and what maybe you could do to be on a level playing field with them or surpass them. So, you know, um, this is a, you know, call to action. I do these on a limited basis. Basically, if you're interested in a complimentary web strategy session, um, text me uh, or text uh, or Carol. I think this is Carol's number. So the 917-527-50. You know what? I think we got the number here wrong. It's actually inverted. It's 917-572-5088. So that's a, that's a typo. And then, so about to, you know, online marketing is basically, it, most of you probably know this, it's a powerful tool for attracting new patients. Now, if you're utilizing online marketing the right way, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you've been what I call a spectator and watching other podiatrists, you know, dominate and then wondering why, or you see them all over Google, um, you know, they're utilizing something, leveraging the power of the web in a way to attract new patients to their practice. So again, we're starting to go out to a, quite a few podiatry conferences and I meet podiatrists all the time and they seem to be, you know, kind of confident in the fact that, you know, no, I'm, I'm actually pretty good. I, I have a website and, you know, I applaud you. Having a website is better than not having a website, but the, in this day and age, a website is just simply not enough. You really need a, a, a and I talk about this in most of my webinars because, you know, podiatrists need to learn this because when they do, it's a game changer. There's a really big difference between a, a website and a web presence. A, web, a website is just that. It's kind of like a, it stays there. It's one dimensional. It changes hardly ever uh, versus a web presence, a totally different animal where the website is like the, the, the middle of it, the hub. Uh, it's got content, whether it's blogs and articles, things like that, that are changing on a regular basis. Uh, in our case, we do it on a weekly basis. Directories are updated. There's maybe Google ads, Facebook campaigns, reputation management, social media. So I just blurted out like, you know, six or seven things, all of which are important in their own right, but they come together to make what's called a web presence versus, again, just a website. <clears throat> and so, you know, and then, by the way, reputation management is a really critical element of this because everything could be buttoned up, meaning that the website is beautiful and it's got great content and it's up to date and all the directories are good to go, but you have bad reviews or not enough reviews, um, then you have a problem. So for those of you that are old enough, you might remember that movie with Tom Cruise with uh, Jerry McGuire where, you know, you had me at hello. Well, it's interesting because a lot of podiatrists um, are actually visible on Google. So they have a pretty good visibility on Google, but when they click on it, it links to an old outdated website and or display some bad reviews. And that in itself, instead of, you know, you had me at hello, in this case, you actually, you lost them at hello. And so, you know, a lot of practice management consultants would tell you, or they used to tell you that, you know, the first impressions are really made at the front front office desk, you know, at the front desk of a podiatry practice. But nowadays, especially with COVID and everything else, people utilize the web for everything. So, you know, looks count and first impressions count. And so if you have an old outdated website, again, you lose a mental low. Uh, if it's not ADA compliant and content's not up to date, or it's not easy for them to navigate this website, then they just click away unless you're the only game in town. But otherwise, you have some issues. So, you know, we're all kind of spoiled these days. So you want to be up to date. And, you know, if you don't 
you know, leverage the power of the web and, and invest marketing through online marketing, where you could invest those dollars is at the yellow pages. I mean, cause that's 50 years ago. So, you know, and we know, I mean, this is just common sense, right? <clears throat> that everybody and their mother has a smartphone either in their hand or right next to them almost all the time. So more, you know, when somebody's looking for a podiatrist, 99% of the time, they're going to search online. <clears throat> and so in order to convert a searcher into a new patient, you got to kind of continually build your practice's visibility and relevance in each touch point over here. And that, again, is much easier said than done, but very, very important. So let's give you a couple examples of how people find you and your practice. Um, and it's not the same for everyone, but let's, in this case, Jen searches for podiatrists near me on Google. So, you know, topping the results is your, maybe your Google listing includes your ratings and your review stars. When she clicks on the listing, it sends her to your website. So again, in this case, it goes from a Google search to a Google ad to your website. And again, if your website's really old and outdated, all that for nothing, because it just went away. Now, Claire over here finds your website through a, a provider directory. She then, you know, cross-checks Google to read your review. So she sees you have 4.9 stars out of five and calls your office directly to make an appointment. So that's a good thing. And, you know, speaking of Google, got to love this visual here, but Google receives over a billion searches a day related to healthcare. You know, us baby boomers are getting older. Everything falls to your feet. So a lot of people are calling on doctors and podiatrists, as you know. Um, so when it comes to, you know, being visible on Google, organic SEO is defined by Google is um, basically refers to the methods used to obtain high placement or ranking on a search engine result that's unpaid. Um, so it's basically, this is what's not an ad. So time is a factor in increasing your, your organic SEO. So it takes a little bit of time to kind of, to get there. And then once you get there, um, you know, I often tease myself because I live in New York City and a lot of folks, when I meet them at the podiatry conference, they think that New Yorkers are very fast paced and very impatient. And it's true, by the way. Um, and why do I bring that up? Because website visitors are the same thing. If somebody has a problem with their, you know, their heel or their toe or their ankle, they want to be able to find what they're looking for quickly. So, you know, this yellow arrow here points to, you know, links to all these things that, you know, whether it's foot and ankle pain, heel pain, whatever it is, you want to be able to get to it uh, quickly. And you'd be surprised how many websites that are, quite frankly, that are beautiful, got waterfalls and feet moving in the oceans, but you can't find what you're looking for. So here you want to have something that looks good, that's modern, but it's also easy to navigate, easy to find what you're looking for. And, you know, I heard this on the news fairly recently about e-patients. Doctors don't really love this in that, they're looking for that patients are actually searching for uh, things like uh, educational content uh, before, during, and after. So things like blogs or educational content and embedded with keywords is a very good thing to have on your website. So good, consistent content is really vital to being seen and staying on page one of Google, which of course, where everyone wants to be. So remember that game, Hide and Seek? You know, it's a fun game, but not online. You don't want to be hiding online. So question you got to ask yourself, as Clint Eastwood used to say, is um, are you visible online? You know, when it comes to SEO, are you or something on, that is hiding you online or are you on page two of Google? As Maxwell Smart used to say, missed it by that much, you know, meaning that you almost made it onto page one of Google. So if you're not on page one of Google for the major search terms and terms in podiatry, you're missing the party. You know, and if you're only on page one of Google one time, that's not bad, but it's also not great. You want to be in Google at least a couple times for heel pain treatment, podiatrist near me or best podiatrist, that type of thing. So you may or may not know about it. So you want to gain clarity on what's going on with your practice online. How visible are you on Google? How are your reviews compared to others? Uh, that type of thing. So again, I'm going to encourage you. And here we got the right phone number. So if you're interested in taking a look, and by the way, my staff and I would put a lot of preparation into these web strategy sessions, especially if it's only 30 or 40 minutes. Um, it's, and it's all about you, you know, so we really kind of, 
you know, take a close look at you and your practice online. And it's eye opening for most people. So if you're on this webinar, um, I encourage you to take advantage of this. You can actually text me at 917-572-5088 and just say web strategy session. We could touch base after this or tomorrow or whatever. But um, it's, a, it's a missed opportunity if somebody offers you a complimentary thing uh, to really, it's all about you. And uh, most podiatrists thank me after these things because they learn a lot about their practice and things that they could have and should have been doing, they still can to move them forward. So organic SEO takes some time to increase, I mentioned before, things like blogs and articles, but there is a way to kind of rocket yourself to the top and widen your net. And of course, that's what Google Ads. So, you know, podiatrists, are, they've heard of Google Ads, they may have experienced Google Ads or clicked on them, but when it comes to ads versus organic SEO, simply put, organic is where Google basically dictates how far your SEO reaches, we call it geo-targeted, in your area or in your hometown, so to speak. Now, Google Ads enables you to do go above and beyond that, where you can literally target outside of your geo-targeted area, maybe a more affluent area near that's drivable to your office, but not necessarily in your hometown. So it's very actually very powerful. And Google Ads are what we call in-the-moment ads. And frankly, there's nothing like it. You know, Google Ads is, you know, it's Google Ads is Google's online advertising program. So through that, you can create online ads to reach new patients exactly when they're interested in the services that you offer. So, you know, heel pain treatment in Princeton, New Jersey, and bam, you pop up immediately. It really doesn't get any better than that if you're a podiatrist in Princeton, New Jersey. So, you know, it changes periodically, but typically you see the ads at the top. You know, so this is, you'll see an ad for uh, Jeep, you know, Jeep.com, the ads, and it says ad or sponsored. And then the, the top, Organic listings are typically, you know, right down below them. So um, they're grouped together. And some people, they do skip the ads. But meanwhile, back on the ranch, you know, Google is one of the most successful and richest companies on the planet. And why? Because of Google ads, because they work. And they're so powerful that there's such a huge uh, vehicle, an effective vehicle for advertising online. So, and why are they so effective? And one of the reasons is that, you mentioned before statistics is another one that Google receives over 63,000 searches per second. It's crazy. And searches for healthcare providers are actually the third most popular search term on Google, which is pretty amazing. So just think about that. But, you know, if you're showing up on Google, but you have, you know, let's say you have bad reviews, well, what is your online reputation saying about you and or your practice? So, you know, this is a really critically important part, we said before, of your overall web presence is your reputation because your online reputation equals your online reviews. And almost everyone these days, especially checking out restaurants and so forth, check reviews before visiting, you know, a podiatrist because you're, you're going to see a doctor, whether it's a dentist or a podiatrist, you know, you want to know what is their deal. You want to check them out. So because your website basically touts you as being the best, it's like a commercial. People need to add context and anecdotal information to what they read about you on your website because you're not going to post negative things about you on your own website. It's only going to be great stuff. So, and by the way, not all review sites are equal. So for example, Google is king. So find out which ones matter most, you know, and we talk about this on the, um, the web strategy session. So again, I encourage you to, you know, take advantage of that because a lot of um, podiatrists have a fair amount of, of reviews uh, on sites that are not as important. So, and when it comes to reviews, you know, you've got three different parts. One is, you know, um, the stars, like if it's one to two stars, put it this way, if you're checking out a new restaurant and they got like, you know, two stars as an average, probably wouldn't be going to that restaurant, right? If it's three stars, it's really not good enough. Four stars is actually pretty good. In our world, in our opinion, we consider that 4.6 to 4.9 stars is excellent. Sometimes we see um, <clears throat> companies or restaurants, whatever, they have, you know, 4,300 reviews at five stars. A lot of people scratch their heads saying, oh, really? Like, is that real? So we believe that 
4.6 to 4.9 is the sweet spot. Then there's comments. A good comment is one that doesn't dissuade anyone, but a bad comment is one that's usually hard to ignore. And then, of course, is a total number of reviews. So this one joined 141 reviews, um, which is good. But if it only had, you know, three reviews, and it's like, you know, is anybody home there? It's not enough. Um, so this is a good representation, a fair amount of people, 141 reviews. And, you know, many podiatrists that we speak with and that we work with have been doing this, it have been added for, you know, two or three or four decades. You know, you don't want to allow years of hard work, decades to be discredited by some bad reviews. So a negative Google review or even on social media can really hurt your practice. And again, on some of these um, strategy sessions, we find out somebody says, you know, our patient flow has actually been down for a couple of weeks or a couple of months. And one of the things we discovered is that maybe they were not visible on Google, that poor SEO. We also discovered that they have a, a, a small number of reviews at 3.3 stars. That's not a good thing. So any patient in a bad mood can leave a negative review. And unfortunately for the podiatrist, many times it's not even about them. It's about insurance related or somebody at the front desk. So you don't want to see or hear things like this where have a really bad experience or upset. It was, they were disappointed. Uh, these are negative things that you don't want associated with your practice. You want a cute kid like this with, you know, want to receive four or five star ratings, uh, legitimate ones that can really regain control of your story. And this is true. Your online reputation really does matter because it's within your power these days to create a positive narrative around your practice with the right strategy. So again, reviews are like the wisdom of the crowd. And most people, they kind of lack the medical expertise necessary to truly discern a great doctor or great podiatrist from a merely a, a competent one. So it's kind of interesting that they read reviews written by total strangers. Yeah, it's... it's it's strange, but it's, it works. So after reading reviews, searchers decide to whom they're going to follow up with and who they're going to call. And that's where kind of like the rubber meets the road. So even people that find you through a personal recommendation will backtrack to read reviews to validate it. And again, we're at the podiatry conferences. Uh, a lot of uh, the older podiatrists, they, they put their hand like, Randy, you know, we've been doing this for 30 years. I'm very fortunate that you know, we work on a word of mouth basis and referrals. It's a doctor that's wonderful. They don't recognize that in the old days, meaning seven years ago, somebody said that Dr. Smith is a great podiatrist. They just come and see you. They just pick up the phone and come and see you. But nowadays, if they somebody's referred to you by another doctor, they pick up their phone, meaning their iPhone, and they search you up, just like this guy's doing, and they check out your, your reviews. And that makes a difference. So in the palm of their hand, uh, in the course of a minute or so, they're making a decision. So this is important now if you know that 94% of potential patients will actually avoid podiatrists with too few stars or too many negative comments. So that's why you want to avoid ne you know, negative reviews or too few stars. <clears throat> so negative reviews cannot be altered or deleted. So I'm asked this question a lot, a lot. Randy, can you, is there any way you can help us just, you know, make this bogus review go away? And unfortunately, the answer is no. So you got to push it down. So the value of one positive review is a big deal. The value of a consistent flow of positive reviews is, as I think it was MasterCard used to say, is priceless. <clears throat> so the question is, how do you legitimately boost your reputation online? You want to, you know, put your best foot forward and incorporate review systems or request systems that will enhance your online reputation and help you gain new patients. So, you know, when you increase your positive reviews, you kind of crush the effect of a negative review with a large number of positive reviews that kind of like push them down. So using, I just want to give you an idea. We have a couple different systems for repetition management. I want to give you um, just two examples of how you can utilize certain systems to get a whole bunch of reviews. Now, one is called feedback and reviews. One's called charter reviews. You know, they're both, they both work well and actually work rate either separately or in tandem with each other. So feedback and reviews is really a, a robust program, <clears throat> really great for a practice wants to aggressively boost their reputation, systematize through campaigns to see significant growth. It actually utilizes artificial intelligence, so it works continually in the background uh, with your patient email list that can be generated from your EHR system. <clears throat> so 
Um, but I would say, you know, careful what you ask for, you just might get it. So if you're asking for feedback and the program is called feedback and reviews, um, not all feedback is good. You'll get great, you'll get good, you'll get what I call neutral, and you will get some negative feedback. Um, but there's ways to handle that. And thanks to the AI, it kind of partitions it. So you can find patients who want to give positive reviews. Um, and of course, we want to go to some of the major sites like starting with Google. <clears throat> I typically always recommend starting with Google. But when the AI in the system discovers an unhappy patient, it quickly notifies you as the doctor and or a practice manager or office manager so you can resolve the issue before it actually becomes a negative review. And if you or your staff can resolve the issue, then the patient feels heard and grateful. Um, it's, you know, it's an opportunity to turn something around. The target review is a little bit different. It's really great for docs that don't collect emails in an EHR system or simply don't have enough of them, just starting to build their list. So this program could be used alone or in conjunction with feedback and reviews, but it's more of what I call human touch where in the office before they leave. So after a patient sees you and their experience is still fresh in their mind, somebody at the front desk could ask this very simple question. Had everything go with the doctor today? If they say something positive, which in most cases they would, then that's when you ask for a review. So if the patient does say something positive, you just send them a link right to their smartphone or computer, and it goes up like this. So first name, hi, Chris, thanks for being a patient. We'd love it if you could give us a review on Google. When they click on that, it goes directly to Google. And in the course of about 20 seconds, it's done. So it's a very simple system. You know, you know, so upon patient approval, your staff enters the, basically the email address into the system and the interface just sends it off. So it's very, very simple to use. Um, you know, some podiatrists, not just podiatrists, other doctors, they don't want to be what I call salesy. So they feel bad about being kind of aggressive about asking for it. But, you know, if you know that you have, have happy patients, then there's nothing wrong with letting them uh, let others know uh, that you're really good at what you do because other every other business does it. So you should do the same thing. So you want to get this type of feedback from your patients. Now, if it's a negative review, you know, how you respond to negative reviews can really alter the perception of your practice. Um, so it should be, this is like a practice management thing. But when a patient leaves a negative review on Google or wherever, it's often best to respond to the patient directly via telephone if you can. Um, as well as the review itself. So someone like, sorry to hear about your experience. We we help, you know, can help others reading a negative review, review, see that you've made an effort, you know. So they basically see that you try to reach out to them to resolve this, and that's a good thing. So I basically throw in a lot of stuff at you about reviews and optimization and directories and visibility and SEO. So, you know, obviously, what does all this mean, you know? And basically means that, again, everybody and their mother is a smartphone, and this is the world that we live in. We, you know, eat, drink, and sleep with these things. So we live in the digital age, really the bottom line, and your reputation battle takes place online. So again, you want to make sure that your reputation and your visibility are up to par and that you can dominate in your area. You want to win the digital battle because whoever looks, whoever is the most, uh, most visible on Google and has the most you know, good reviews typically wins. They win that, what I call the digital battle. And a web presence that we mentioned before is really never finished because not like continuous optimization of each element is really crucial to strategically competing in today's competitive market. So, you know, in our world, you know, we want to make our customers be what we call online superheroes, which is why most of our customers are dominating in their area and their practices are more successful because they're actually using proper marketing uh, through great looking websites that are customized for podiatrists, that are AD compliant, that are fresh content on a weekly basis, directories that are updated, and of course, reputation management where they have a, a good amount of um, reviews and positive reviews. Um, but you know, if you're in a private practice, you have multiple plates up in the air, you, and, you, and you have uh, HR stuff, you have a, a life outside your practice, and it's only so much you can do in one day. So you got to outsource and delegate. You cannot do all this. We've seen a number of podiatrists that actually attempt to do this stuff on their own, and they crash and burn because you just can't do it. 
You know, if you went to, you know, college for four years and then podiatry school and then residency, like 11 year journey to become a podiatrist, you know, your value, in our opinion, is treating patients. So, you, you know, you want to find companies like us where we specialize only in podiatry and we do all the work for you. So, again, successful leaders and businesses know the magic word is out, outsourcing and delegating. So, and successful businesses and small business owners or leaders are leaders or are typically open-minded. Um, my favorite prospects at the conferences are podiatrists that I can tell they're already successful, but they want to learn what do we got? You know, what can we do to get a little bit better? You know, like some call it the slight edge to get just to give them a slight edge of, uh, ahead of other podiatrists who are at their level. So, you know, are you open-minded to learn more? And I hope you are. So if you are, you know, you know, and you, you want to know, you know, do you know who's eating your lunch, so to speak? You know, and again, we look at these things closely in this uh, web strategy session that I keep referring to. So if you haven't reached out to me yet, I encourage you to take advantage of it. But you don't have to take my word for it. You know, we have so many podiatrists. I could fill the whole presentation with uh, reviews. And actually, if you check us out online, you'll see uh, about 100 reviews on Google. Um about us, about podiatry kind of connection, how we've kind of changed the game for private practices. Now, we do work with some super groups, but not many. Um, most of our customers are, you know, one or two or three podiatrists, maybe four, maybe five, but typically one to three, typically one to two offices is like our bread and butter. And those are the folks who are changing their world in a good way and uh, taking them to new levels. And so, again, if you, you know, it's, it's funny because we're out of the summer, the leaves are changing, the fall, you know, fall season's here, the weather's getting cold. It's the end of the year. I'm looking forward to the beginning of the new year. So, you know what they say, the definition of insanity, doing the same things over and over again, expecting different results. So if you thought about kind of stepping up your game when it comes to marking your practice, you know, don't go into the new year the same way you came out of this year. Do something different. So again, uh, the online you know web strategy session is a great way to challenge you on that, to take a look and show you. It's just similar to like, well, like a, a doctor that takes an x-ray, take a look and let's see if there's something broken. Um, so this is my last call on this to, you know, encourage you to take advantage of this to text me at 917-572-5088. We typically as a way to thank you for your time, um, uh, because we know time is valuable at the end of our strategy session, we'll actually send you a $75 Amazon gift card, which with the holidays approaching, will probably come in handy. Um, but with that, uh, it's my contact information down there and, um, I think that is basically it. So I want to uh, thank you guys. I know it's in the evening. It's about 8.35. We didn't go that long. And uh, I appreciate your time, and I'm open to any questions you guys might have for me. <clears throat> All right. Hey. Sarah, yes, we are back. <laughs> so, Carol, I'm going to put you on the spot here. What do you have to add? Anything? <laughs> I don't know about anybody else, but uh, school lunches aren't that awesome. So, <laughs> uh, I mean, that's everybody's ideal patient is different, but you want to make sure that you're getting whatever your ideal patient is, whatever, if it's, you know, routine foot care, if you're looking to get into more of wounds, I know that seems to be more of um, the more I go around to conferences, people are wanting to get into more wound care. Um, you just want to make sure you, you cater to that online because people are out there looking for it. And if you don't show them that you have it, or if you're not on the, you know, at the top, I was actually looking for something myself, but I was looking for someone specifically, but I Googled the name and I was like, hold on, that's not it. And no joke, they were at the bottom. If I wasn't looking for that particular, I can't remember what it was, that particular person or a uh, business. I would have, they would have totally lost my online vote, sort of say, because I would have clicked on the first one of the first three, because it's the, that's where your mind goes is when you're Googling. So right. you want to make sure that you're at the top. So showing up once, like Randy said, if you're at once and you're like in the middle, you're going to get lost among all the other noise online. Uh, I think a lot of that too, in turn, when you were talking about how we are a searching society. And that's so true, especially 
it's changed so much with healthcare because mm-hmm. I think about, I mean, I'm not super young, but I'm also younger than my mom, obviously. And <laughs> I hope, I hope so. so. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that would work there. <laughs> but like, I think about, you know, when she would go to a specialist and it was always because of her referring physician. I never like, that's just not the way that I seek out my health care. And I just feel like the referring physicians is for the generations ahead, like that are older than us and younger generations are no longer relying on physician referrals and they're relying on um, reviews and Google searches. And it's just, Mm -hmm. you know, the, the, it's just a completely outdated way of expecting to get new patients in your door. And, and to add to that, Sarah, if I may, my mom just texted me. (laughs) (laughs) Your ears were burning. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Is that, you know, we, Randy and I do get like, Oh, well, you know, I have older patients and they, you know, aren't looking online. Well, that might be true, but their kids and their caretakers are. Uh, right. I have and some. Going to you know, be here forever, you know. Sadly, I don't like. <laughs> no one's getting any younger. So. And so you have to, you have to be online. They're missing the boat in so many fashions. If you're not visible, like so, you know, hide and go seek. Fun as a kid, but man, you do not. No one's going to be looking. You know, on their, you know, first few. That's where they're looking. Exactly. And, um, like I said, I, I live in Texas. My family's all on the West Coast, but I help my mom with a lot of things. She's in Utah. So I will be Googling and I'll put in that zip code or the city. To, well, for her, it's the city because it's really small. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but if they're in a larger area, it's going to be by zip code or something. And I'm going to be looking for the reviews for the information. And if it's all like crazy or there's more negative or just a few um, that's going to, and like I said, I'm in Texas. So regardless, the searches are happening from different States to your area as well. Well, that's the thing is it's like, we're still stuck in this concept that um, older people don't get online. It's like, I'm going to be 40 this week. I'm the older people. Like, (laughs) they know how to use it too. Don't let them fool you. Well, (laughs) and like the, I mean, the older people, it's us now, like we've caught up, like I'm not 20 years old anymore and thinking about making a Facebook profile. Like I've had my Facebook profile since 2008 and it's just like, that's almost, I mean, it's not almost 20 years, but kind of almost it's in six years. (laughs) It's going to be 20 years that I've had a Facebook profile. Like it's not, um, Old people are on the, on the web. Like I'm one of them. <laughs> yeah. 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 No. Um, so one of the things I was thinking about when you guys were talking about, um, you know, Google searching, not delivering the results that you want is I Google search the names of pod- podiatric conferences all the time, you know, like, FPMA or AAPPM or whatever it is. And oftentimes it brings up some kind of tool company, like, you know, or engineering conference or something like that. Not at all what I want. And so I've learned that I have to Google AAPPM podiatry to find what I want. Mm -hmm. But when you're looking for a physician, when you're in pain, you're not thinking, what are my best search terms to get what I'm looking for. (laughs) You know, you don't have time for that. And so you generally do click on one of those top things and um, yeah, God help you if you're not, if you're not up there. So. Right. It's true. It is true. Um, All right. So Randy, if we text you and this is your correct phone number that 917-572-5088. Yes. Okay. If we text you, (laughs) We immediately get a $75 Amazon gift card. Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. Uh, Carol would say, go fish. I had five no. different numbers. No. Set up. Actually, really, it's my pleasure. So it's really just to thank somebody for their time. So um, 
if when we schedule a web strategy session after we after we have it, then I email them from Amazon uh, uh, the Amazon gift card. Yeah, that's what we do. I mean, what a great win win to have the strategy, have this the like no obligation strategy session just to see yeah. what's what, right? And yeah. just getting all that informa- information and then seventy five bucks. It's like yeah. that's a uh, no I'm loss gonna situation. My, I'm going to play my de- my own devil advocate i think a lot of podiatrists are under they just assume that this is just like a sales pitch yeah and so you know and everybody's selling something but really we, we spend a lot of time through our software and the tools that we've developed to uh, do certain analytics to present to podiatrists to show them what's what and usually they're pretty impressed they're, they're, you know that we right. spend so much time to really take a close look at them we don't charge them anything for this and uh, to some of them you know become a customer of ours um yeah they do but some don't you know some do some do it's really just to share with them and it's really there's no right or wrong by the way it's really it's what i call appetite so for certain podiatrists that are really quite frankly they're winding down you know they have got another year or two not another five or six or seven years because they they should be active on the playing field but if they've got a, another six months or a year and want to go go fishing go play golf i get it you know go, <laughs> um you they don't have to concern themselves about this but if they're you know i see podiatrists again at the conference and so oh, i'm winding down and i say to them really come on realistically how many more years do you think you'd be processing well realistically well I'll probably another you know six to eight years i'm like well that's a long time you know it's almost a decade so why wouldn't you want to you know, take a, to retire yeah, right. earlier if you got this yeah. huge influx of patients and yeah. made a bunch of money in the next two years and then yeah. it's not eight years it is six years yeah right. i mean if yeah if you uh-huh. didn't have a smartphone and you, you had a flip phone an old one a crappy one and you went to a smartphone you're probably not going back to the flip phone you know it's the you know get, come on into the 21st century you know i say <laughs> the water is nice and warm check it you know, put your foot in there check it out yeah don't don't be shy. Well, and I, I've also found that a lot of um, podiatrists that I've spoken to about these sorts of things, we talk about Facebook and they're just like, well, I'm not on Facebook, so I don't think it's important. It's just like, right, but like you're not representative of your population. So right. just because you're not into it doesn't mean your patient base is. And when you look at the statistics on how many people are continuing to get on Facebook yeah. as a regular user every day. Think you're going to want to be uh, i think you're going to want to have a presence <laughs> and by the way most but i well not most but many many but i just have no idea what facebook has to do with attracting new patients but there is correlation so i love this analogy or that i heard this before there's things that you know that you know like you know that you know how to speak english and there's things that you know that you don't know like you know sarah that you do not know how to speak chinese i know that yeah you don't <laughs> Well, I've never I was seen waiting to go get into the matrix. Yeah. And, right. <laughs> right. and then, yeah. then there's that other part of the pizza pie where it's the things that you don't know that you don't know. So when it comes to things like social networks and how it impacts a podiatry practice, there's a lot of things that people don't know that they don't know. And there is the sandbox that we play in. Yeah. yeah. So, so we have a couple people that are hanging on with us. And I'm curious not to put you guys on the spot, our attendees that are watching tonight, but... I know you are thinking right now of a specific challenge you're facing that's related to marketing. Either it's reviews or, you know, your Google listing placement or your website could use a refresh or how to get started with email marketing. Everybody has something that is on their minds. So if you're comfortable, I'd love to invite you to share that either in the Q&A or the chat. Or if you want to raise your hand, we can unmute you. You've got two experts and two wannabe experts here <laughs> available to answer your questions. So now's the perfect time. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Go for it. Oh, somebody raised their hand. Okay. Let me see if I can unmute you. There you go. Ask to unmute. Hey, you're on with Ann and Sarah. <laughs> well, that's pretty professional. Hey, this is uh, Lance Hardison in Oklahoma City. Um, I have a question about the Google um, uh, ads because I had like four patients, new patients today 
they came in saying they, they saw me on the internet. Um, and I'm, so I go home, say the previous time this happened. Now I Google, Google myself or Google podiatrist, foot, foot doctor, and I don't see my name on the list at all, but these people are finding me somehow. So I don't know, I don't know how they're finding me, first of all. And I'm getting a lot of people from the internet and I've had, you know, uh, pop doc or whoever the heck it is that calls me and asks me to do this and that. And so I want to get more <clears throat> involved on the internet. Of course, I'm on Facebook, I have a Facebook page, internet, I have Instagram, YouTube. Uh, so mm -hmm. I've got all that stuff, but I want to get, get more presence on, on, on Google. So, um, I guess it was not really a question, but just a statement that, uh, I'll probably be calling you or my, somebody will be calling you and talking to you about this because, uh, even though, you know, when you win money at the, at the casino, you want to win more, right? So you win patients, mm -hmm. right. but you want to win right. more. So yeah. that, that's my mindset. And I, and I want to try to figure out how to do that. So, yeah, you know, uh, I don't think I mentioned this, but most of our customers, um, I'd say about 75% of our customers, we work with about 500 practices across the United States. And, uh, most of them are not, uh, you know, you, like I just presented to a group of resident doctors, third year residents. That's not our customer base. Our customer base are, are podiatrists who are practicing five years, 10 years, 20 years and plus, you know, and they're doing yeah. okay. Um, but they have what I call a mental anchor. I mean, they, they know at some level that the whole world is, you know, techie and, you know, phones and, you know, smartphones, et cetera. And uh, they have, they have a, maybe have a website, but they're only have like a, the web presence I talked about, but yet, despite that, they're still a pretty decent practice and they're still busy. So it's not, it's not urgent, but they just feel like they're kind of missing the party and they could or should be doing more. And the other part of it is maybe, uh, and, and this is not relevant to all podiatrists. Some podiatrists are just general, will take whatever walks through the door and may, and, and others are much more intentional. They want to attract a certain type of patient to their practice. And that's, you know, there's nothing like online marketing to do that because you, you can actually get that done. And uh, some podiatrists are like, oh, I have too many patients. You know, they want to, they'd rather have us more ideal patients, maybe less of them, theoretically see less people make more money, uh, that type of thing. But different strokes for different folks. But I, so, do you have a website right now? Yes, I do. It's, uh, it's on okfootclinic.com. Uh, it's in Oklahoma City. So, um, but I agree 100% with you. And, and, and on a quick another note, uh, on, a, on, a, on another note, uh, you were mentioning about how uh, people, uh, you respond to people when they say, uh, when you tell them, hey, thanks for the, thanks for the review or whatever. And I just had a lady today that I, I took a piece of glass out of her foot because the ER wouldn't do it. And it was real superficial and it was easy. And she, she went on and put, and put this, uh, you know, five, five sentence little excerpt out there. And so I asked her today, or I told her today, I said, thank you for that. She's like, you really read that? I'm like, yeah, I read it. She said, well, I appreciate that. So that yeah. goes a long way too. If you see that and the patient comes back in and say, hey, thanks for that, you know, five-star yeah. re review or whatever it was, because it helps out a lot. Absolutely. So, uh, well, yeah, and I, mean, I think one of the interesting things though, too, that you'll find out when you work with Randy and Carol with your web strategy session, when you're talking about, you don't know how someone found you. Um, you know, they're going to probably be able to dissect that for you. And a lot of times it's depending on the location of the individual that was searching, it could have just been, you know, Google's tool to be you know, very good at, sure. it, if you have a Google business profile, um, you put your address in. So it'll find anyone who's in the location of that patient, because that's the service that that's the right. beauty of Google. But uh, on your website, as I was just looking at it, and I, I mean, I just literally just pulled it up and was just glancing around. You've got all the content on there. You, you're when you ask your patient how did you find them, you didn't say what did you type in to search. You know, depending on what words they use to search, that just could have been, um, could have been a word yeah. that is in the content on the front end of your website, and so it comes up on that organic search. Um, well, sometimes, so, sometimes they'll say they'll say, "Oh, I don't know what it was, foot doctor, or foot doctor near me," and they'll have sure. this, this this ambiguous answer. And, um, and I'm like, okay, it's great, whatever. Right. But, but yeah, so that's what ahead. they'll help you find out is, um, you know, you, you discover all of the kind of the, the, the anatomy of your website, basically, and why it functions the way it functions and the, what the pieces that you have, how that's affecting your Google index. Do you, hey, Randy, do you guys, uh, do you guys also, so, so, so the, 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 uh, ugliness of Google, I guess I should say, 
is that they have my my cell phone as my number, my office number. So I get probably 20 calls a day. I want to change my appointment. I'm like, I want to do this. Right. I'm, like, I'm like, I, I, I can't. <laughs> I can't. Right, right. I, don't, I don't know how to go through the, the, big, <laughs> yeah. the big company and figure out how, to, how the hell to get my number out there because it, it's really irritating. Not, not that right. I tell them that. But that's yeah. just what happens. Is that the uh, the four zero five nine four nine? Is that you? No, three two three two one four seven. I'm looking at maybe we'll get a different website. So uh, um, yeah, so it's okfootclinic.com. Yeah, okay. I don't know. Yeah. But anyway. So well, you know, if you want, we should while well, we have it, we should schedule something for you. Um, it would be myself or Carol. Um, if you're if you're open to that, take a look. It doesn't have to be this week. It could be next week, the week after. But uh, typically, block out at least 30, 40 minutes for this, and we prepare some reports in advance, and uh, we share our screen with you, and that way we can uh, really show you what we see, and then talk about other ways we can help you, and you know, hear you out, listen to your questions, that type of thing. Um, sure. So, is is there such thing as a good day or time of day for you? Uh, not a good day, but time of day is, you know, probably around, probably around 11 or so, uh -huh. 11, 15, because I go to the gym. I try to get to the gym at noon if I can, but I, I will definitely, time. I will definitely, uh, block that block out a day for that. And that'll be my rest day. So. <laughs> that sounds good. So, um, so your cell number is, um, okay. Very good. You, well, and, yeah. Um, yeah. So if you want, you know, you have my number, uh, just text me, uh, okay your content info, let me know what day or Tom works for you. We'll get it on the calendar. Perfect. And be great. So I appreciate you. Uh, Sounds good. Uh, yeah. Good chatting with you. Thank so. you. Yeah, likewise. All right. So. Well, thank you very much um, for joining us on this webinar. And I'm glad that you spoke up and got your questions answered. It always is refreshing for us to actually hear from someone. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes it feels a little one sided, like we're talking to somebody and who knows if they're actually even sitting at their computer. Sure. <laughs> yeah. No. But um, yeah, thank you guys very much. Thanks, Randy and Carol for presenting as always. This is the last marketing webinar for 2022. So we are uh, excited to see what's in store for 2023. We'll yeah, go, go back to the lab, see what we can whip up yes. for you. Back to the drawing board. All good stuff. So. so make sure you do join us next week, the same time next week. We have a presentation with Dr. Doug Ritchie um, using uh, treating chronic heel pain with the Aerospring bracing system. So nice. if you're seeing a lot of chronic heel pain, which I presume you probably are, um, we will have Dr. Richie online with us live on the 25th. So next Tuesday at 8 p.m. EST, just like tonight. Yep. Very good. Thank All you right, guys. Everyone. Thanks for having us. Thanks for joining yeah. us. Good night. Thank good you. Night. Everyone. Thanks. Bye -bye. Good night.